everyone, welcome to Loomis. In this video, we're going to discuss a very famous game that is played between two players. And this game is called the Prisoner's Dilemma. So the classic setup of a Prisoner's Dilemma game involves two criminals who rob a bank and are caught by the police. So these two suspects are now being separately investigated by the police for committing this crime. Each of the suspects can choose between confessing to the crime or lying about their involvement. There are no witnesses to the crime, so the only way for the police to prove that the two of them did this is if at least one of the two suspects will admit that they robbed the bank. So with this background information, we can represent the following payoffs in this payoff matrix. If both suspects confess to the crime, they will face six years of jail time each. If they both lie and deny committing the crime, they will only face one year of jail, jail time each because the police can't prove anything. However, if one suspect confesses and the other suspect lies, the one that confesses can walk away free for aiding the police investigation and the one that lies will face 10 years of jail time. So with this matrix, let's try to figure out now what the dominant strategy for each prisoner is. From prisoner one's perspective, if he thinks prisoner two will confess, then he will serve six years of jail time if he also confesses, or 10 if he lies. So he will confess. And if he thinks prisoner two will lie, then he can get off without any jail time if he confesses, or serve one year if he lies. So he chooses to confess. So the dominant strategy for prisoner one seems to be to confess no matter what prisoner two does. So let's look at this from prisoner two's perspective. If he thinks prisoner one will confess, then he also prefers 6 years to 10 years, and he'll confess as well. If he thinks prisoner 2 will lie, then he'll prefer 0 years to 1 year, so he will confess. So again here, no matter what, prisoner 2 is going to confess because this seems to be his dominant strategy. So we have found a Nash equilibrium in this game at the intersection of confess and confess because this is where both players' dominant strategy will lead to. And from this box, neither player is willing to deviate. For prisoner 1, he will not want to lie and deviate to 10 years of jail time. Prisoner 2 at the same time will also not want to do the same. So this becomes a Nash equilibrium where both prisoners decide to confess. And as you may be wondering right now, isn't 6 years 6 years a much worse outcome than if both prisoners had just cooperated and kept their mouth shut and lied together? Each of them would have only served 1 year of jail time. And that's exactly the interesting thing about a prisoner's dilemma game. The best collective outcome here would have been cooperation and serving only one year of jail time each. But because each player here creates a strategy based on what they think the other player will do, we end up with a Nash equilibrium in the six year, six year box, which is the worst collective outcome for the two prisoners. So now you know why this is called a prisoner's dilemma game. The dilemma here is that mutual cooperation between the two players will yield a better outcome. But cooperation isn't the rational outcome here, because the choice to cooperate is irrational based on the payoffs that the players see. Now that you know what the classic prisoner's dilemma game looks like, you can understand why the term prisoner's dilemma is used so much in economics to describe any game where completely rational individuals may not cooperate, even though it is in their best interest to do so. Each player responds to the opponent's actions, and they reach the worst collective outcome. Next, we're going to look at how cooperative games apply to cartels in an oligopoly. 